Hi, Corey Geiger, joined by Alan Saunders from Pittsburgh Sports Now to talk about the Patrick Chambers news. Huge news tonight, Alan, and we're going to get to all aspects of this here over the next couple of minutes. It was a surprise, kind of, this news that Patrick Chambers is resigning. But here's the thing, Alan, when you consider some of the things that have happened over the last uh, few months and certainly the Rasir Bolton allegation of Patrick Chambers using the word noose, here's the thing, man. Words matter in our society. You and I write for a living. We talk for a living. We have to choose our words very carefully. When you're talking to young athletes, especially African-American, you can't use words like noose. And so Patrick Chambers really put himself in a situation here that probably left Penn State in a spot where it had no other choice. Yeah, and I'm not sure where the, the decision was eventually made here, if this was a choice he made at the you know, very beginning of the season or if this was you know, the, the time that Penn State decided to make a decision or, or what. But I just think it, it was pretty obvious for a little while that this was a situation that wasn't going to work out because of uh, the Bolton allegations. And, uh, and let's be honest, if the basketball record was a lot better, maybe that's something that people would overlook. Um, but you don't get the, that benefit of the doubt with a combination of, you know, pretty mediocre results overall for a basketball program. And then uh, you get that. You, who knows how that's going to affect future recruiting? My guess is not positively. It just seemed like it was a situation that uh, was going to end up here eventually. To your point, we're going to find out about the basketball ball record kind of thing with the Greg Marshall situation at Wichita State because he's being investigated now. Greg Marshall's had great success there. And that's a different story. But that'll kind of help determine, you know, the, the, the value and criteria that, or, you know, schools use with how successful a coach is. I want to say this, I've dealt with Patrick Chambers for many years. He was a guest frequently on my radio show. He is a good man. Uh, Pat, the Patrick Chambers I know is a good man who cares. He's passionate, uh, very passionate. And I think what happens is when you get a fiery person who's passionate, and who's in a job that's very difficult. Penn State basketball is an extremely difficult job. I'm not making excuses. I'm not condoning anything that he ever did or said, because remember, he pushed Miles Dredd a couple of years ago during a, a, a timeout. It's just these, these coaches, they have to learn to control their emotions and watch what they say. You cannot use a word like noose. And the investigation that apparently has been going on uh, for a couple months I'm sure we'll find out some more details about maybe what some other players might have said about Patrick Chambers. But again, when you, when you put yourself in that spot and you start doing and saying things that uh, are, are, are harmful to your young student athletes, really, it's, it's almost impossible for a school to stand by you. Yeah, I, I think so. And, and I, you know, I don't know how much of, of uh, what, what's to come, obviously. Could there be more? Uh, we don't know. Um, to me, that's what makes the timing of this pretty interesting, is that obviously the stuff with the news comment had come out months ago. Um, so why right now, you know, 30 days before season, if you're going to make a move based on that news, you would have thought it would have come sooner than this. But I think something that probably needed to happen eventually and, uh, you know, I think they have a pretty solid interim option in Jim Ferry. It's not going to be an easy time to hire a coach 30 days before the season. You know, I think that was pretty much the only choice they had to go with. Yeah, we've dealt with Jim. I've dealt with Jim when he was a coach at Long Island, uh, ran a good, fun system. He was also the coach at Duquesne. You dealt with him uh, there. To me, Jim, good offensive mind. Uh, we'll see how that all plays out. But tell, tell the Penn State fans out there, Alan, a little bit about Jim Ferry that they may not know much. Um. I, I've really enjoyed covering Jim's teams at Duquesne. They, they weren't, you know, the record is what it is. They weren't super successful. I thought he recruited really well for the level. And just in general, for a guy that maybe doesn't have um, the kind of reputation, didn't come to Duquesne with a reputation of being some kind of uh, great recruiter, but I thought he did really well in getting some kids um, that were, you know, highly rated uh, kids to come to Duquesne. And I thought he found some kids that were underrated that turned out to be really good players. Um, I loved his offensive style. Uh, like you said, fun, uh, modern offense, going to utilize the three point shot pretty heavily. Um, most of his teams at Duquesne were really good at shooting the three, not always so good at defense. I think that was probably the, um, 
the, the issue towards the end of his tenure at Duquesne when kind of ran out of shooters and then, then things started to fall apart a little bit. But, uh, you know, from all my interactions, a good guy, uh, easygoing. And then I think anytime you go to um, a guy who's already on the staff, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help the team from a morale standpoint. You know, you lose a coach at any point, it's tough. Uh, right on the beginning of a season, I think might be the worst possible time, right? You know, you're right in the middle of trying to install plays and, and figure out what the game plan is going to be and what the rotation is going to be like. I think it would be almost impossible to do that with someone from the outside. And, you know, to have a guy with his extensive experience as a Division One head coach, not necessarily at the Big Ten level, but, uh, you know, the A-10's pretty good basketball. Uh, I think that's a huge advantage for them. I just want to close with this about Patrick Chambers. I hope he gets another chance because Pat is a good man. He's passionate. He went through a lot of ups and downs at Penn State. He took over a program that, quite frankly, was just awful when, when Ed DeCellis left. There was nothing there other than Tim Frazier, and there were a lot of lean years. And Penn State fans were highly critical of Pat for a long time. I was as well. Didn't make the tournament until they would have made it this, this past year if not for the coronavirus. But he could recruit. He did a good job recruiting. He got better talent top to bottom on that Penn State roster than we had seen in a, in a while. So, Pat, I, this, is a, this is a very unfortunate situation. He's got to choose his words better. He's going to have to go back the assistant coach route. I, I hope at some point he gets a second chance because I do think he can be a good college basketball coach. Um, he's got a lot of experience at the higher levels coming from Villanova as an assistant. Uh, it may be a while because these kinds of things can stick with you. But the bottom line is, in our society nowadays, you can't talk to young men this way. You can't put your hands on a young man like you did with Miles Dredd. And you can't have repeated offenses like this because, as I said earlier, no matter how much you win, it, it almost puts the school in a, in a no-win spot where they, they can't do anything about it. So uh, I, I, I hope he gets another shot down the road. I don't know that he will. These are the kinds of things, Alan, that really stick with you for a while. Yeah, they have a chance to. And, um, you know, we've seen here in Pittsburgh, we had the same – uh, you know, sort of up close and personal thing with Mike Rice situation and, and, and what happened there. And so, um, you know, maybe he, he gets another shot eventually. And, uh, you know, like you said, I, I haven't had your level of interaction with Pat Chambers, but covered him probably at least four or five times between them playing Pitt and Duquesne over the years and was always a, a good and upfront guy. And so uh, I wish him the best. And, you know, it's going to be a tough year. It was going to be a tough year for Penn State anyway, but a really tough situation for these players, I think, uh, now to lose a head coach. You know, already some structural advantages, disadvantages, like you talked about, Penn State and the, and the Big Ten, and there's some some top-of-the-nation programs that they'll be facing. Uh, could make for a tough basketball season for them. All right. Appreciate Alan Saunders from uh, Pittsburgh Sports Now for hopping on with this. I'll have a lot more on this on Nitty Sports Now in the coming days. Thanks for tuning in, folks.